Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. On this channel in the past we have looked at the history of many characters from the Street Fighter universe. This has of course included the franchise's most infamous villain himself, M. Bison, the dictator and leader of the Shadaloo crime syndicate who functions as the primary antagonist in the majority of the Street Fighter games. While this may very well be the case, what is often overlooked is that this character is not the final opponent in the last story chronological entry in the series. In Street Fighter 3 and its reiterations, the games cover events that occur after all of the other Street Fighter games and then Bison is nowhere to be seen this time. Instead at the end of the game players must take on the imposing Gil, an all new character who was created for the game to function as the ultimate opponent in the Street Fighter universe. So in today's video we are going to focus on the backstory of this somewhat mysterious man and how he became the last challenge to overcome for the heroes of the Street Fighter canon. Who the bloody hell is this muscled up maniac and why is he so significant to the franchise's story overall? Let's find out. This ladies and gentlemen is the insane story of Gil, Street Fighter's true antagonist? Yeah. Street Fighter, Street Fighter, Street Fighter, a series with one of the most chronologically confusing timelines in history. With the story starting in the 1987 original, moving to Street Fighter Alpha, then Street Fighter 2, then 4, then 5, to finally Street Fighter 3. Unless you're a Street Fighter diehard or have at least been watching my series, the events of the games can be pretty tough to keep up with the casuals, with most people not realising how much substance there is to the Street Fighter story in the first place. So to get to Gil's introduction in the franchise, I guess we have to go back to Street Fighter 3 New Generation's original release in 1997. You see, as this was before there was a Street Fighter 4 or 5 yet, Filling in the story gaps into the timeline, Street Fighter 3 at the time was all we knew about the events that unfolded after Street Fighter 2. A playthrough with most characters in Street Fighter 2 would lead to M. Bison's defeat, and in the most recent iteration of the game prior to the release of Street Fighter 3, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, M. Bison is actually killed in the tournament when he is ambushed by Akuma, a character the franchise would shed a lot more light on in the Street Fighter Alpha games. So bringing all of this into account, M. Bison seemed dead and gone by Street Fighter 2, meaning that Street Fighter 3 required an all new main villain. Speaking of Street Fighter 3, in the first iteration of the game, in terms of recurring characters only Ryu and Ken would be included, and by the time Third Strike came around only Akuma and Chun-Li had been added too, meaning the whole entirety of the rest of the game's roster was literally a new generation of fighters, with Gil offering up the final challenge. So let's talk about who this character is and the concept behind his creation. Street Fighter 3 tells the tale of yet another World Warrior tournament, seeing a few familiar faces return to action but mostly new ones. This new tournament is hosted by a mysterious secret society headed up by none other than the star of our video today, Gil himself. We will talk more about the secret society shortly but before we get to that let's cover some of the influence that went into this rather strange looking character's design. Gil's odd appearance is strongly characterised by his unique half red and half blue muscular body, flowing blonde hair and distractingly small, slightly disturbing underwear. The chiselled physique paired with minimal clothing was a stylistic decision that was chosen to make him somewhat resemble a Greek god. Further to this, the red-blue colour scheme was partially chosen for technical reasons rather than just an artistic choice, in that his asymmetrical colouring was chosen in order to show off the raw capabilities of Capcom's brand new Capcom System 3 board hardware. What I mean by this is with previous games such as Street Fighter 2 for example, when fighters changed direction their character sprites would merely be flipped leading to some continuity problems such as Sagat's eye patch swapping eyes every time he turned around. Gil on the other hand was proof that Capcom had managed to get around this issue. Apparently in early design stages Gil was set to be black and white to represent light and darkness, however he would later be changed to red and blue to not only emphasise Capcom System 3's hardware power, but also to represent Gil's power to control fire and ice with perfect elemental balance. 
Apart from resembling the Greek gods of antiquity, inspiration for his personality was drawn from various Judeo and Christian sources, with the name Gil being taken from the Hebrew Gilead, meaning eternal joy. Gil sees himself as a Jesus Christ-like figure, claiming to be both the Messiah and the Saviour of mankind. A further nod to Christ is present through one of Gil's combat techniques, known as Resurrection, a power that literally allows Gil to resurrect himself and fully restore his health after he has already been taken out of commission. In fact, when pulling this feat off, he even suspends himself in mid-air with both arms outward evoking imagery of Jesus' crucifixion. In terms of further religious references, a further technique that Gil can wield in battle is taking advantage of his sephiric wings that perform devastating supernatural attacks. Various Abrahamic religions describe celestial beings that have two or three pairs of wings that serve as throne guardians of God. So Gil shares powers with some of the highest ranking beings in the hierarchy of angels. It is not just ancient Greek mythology and the more modern religions that Gil takes inspiration from though, as his long blonde flowing hair resembles that of some of the Norse gods. His ability to wield the power of fire and ice also matches that of the frost and fire giants of Nordic mythology. Further from all of this, if you really want to see some Gil design inspiration, then look no further than Frantisek Kupka's illustration of Prometheus with the flowing blonde hair, chiselled physique and red and blue colour scheme all being present. So that is the design influence and some of the moves and personality traits that were selected for this fighter, but that does still not go far into explaining who this man exactly is and how he headed up a secret society. So let's try to get to the bottom of his story. In Street Fighter 3, Gil is presented as a cult leader. He strives to be a benevolent and compassionate monarch over all of those he rules over. While on the surface often appearing worldly, charismatic and majestic, Gil is in fact a very flawed individual, known for being arrogant, disdainful and manipulative. In fact, he is so confident he knows what is best for all of his followers that he goes as far as to set out draconian rules and ideas that they must all follow and obey. This elitist way of thinking paired with his manipulative tendencies make Gil perhaps the most dangerous man in the whole Street Fighter universe. Gil actively and morally brainwashes others into thinking the same way he does, even at times going as far to take extreme measures such as taking part in kidnappings to coerce others into his faith. In fact, in many ways, his secret society is not much different from M. Bison Shadowloo. Both want to control the planet and both opt to try and do so through hosting World Warrior tournaments to show their strength and lure out their adversaries. Gil is known to often murder completely innocent individuals provided it assists him with reaching his ultimate ambitions. Gil's god complex means that he himself sees no faults or flaws in his wrongdoings, as they are all simple parts of his greater goals that are above a regular human's comprehension. Now in terms of the supernatural abilities Gil wields, you may be wondering how all of this is possible. Well, the Secret Society itself is a mysterious cult-like organisation that has already existed for just over 2,000 years, with a goal dedicated to saving mankind and building a utopian society. Gil, along with his brother Urien, who we will touch more on soon in this video, were born to parents who were dedicated to this organisation, with both parents being powerful enough to have even been candidates for presidency of this cult. Aside from having a high standing within this secret society, Gil's mother was an Olympic level athlete and his father held a doctorate in sports dynamics. Through his parents' work with the secret society, they would genetically enhance Gil as a child, increasing his strength, speed and other attributes exponentially. In fact, Gil would be one of hundreds of enhanced warriors including Gil's own brother Urien, all of which were made to participate in intense hand-to-hand -hand combat training on a regular basis. Gil would ultimately surpass all of the competition, including his own brother, who would be left very bitter in the process. According to the society's religion, the strongest fighter that arose from the training program would be considered the reincarnation of the society's emperor, leading to him being appointed as the society's president at only the age of 22. 
Across the Street Fighter 3 games, Gil was involved in angles with various characters from the Street Fighter universe, including newcomer British heavyweight boxing champion Dudley. The secret society, with their wealth and power, came into the possession of a Jaguar automobile, a family heirloom that originally belonged to Dudley's father. Dudley challenges Gil to a fight in order to have the car returned, which of course Gil agrees to, but offers to return the car anyway, claiming it is petty and insignificant compared to his goals. Prior to the events of Street Fighter 3, Gil would face off against a military martial artist named Tom, who he would beat so badly that he would nearly cripple him in the process. Tom's stepson, Alex, enters the World Warrior Tournament to gain revenge, similar to the likes of Guile against M. Bison on behalf of Charlie before him. The story of Street Fighter 3 New Generation culminates in a fight between Alex and Gil, with Alex managing to triumphantly overcome Gil's might. After the battle though, Alex refuses to kill Gil. Now across the three Street Fighter 3 titles, New Generation, Second Impact and Third Strike, it does get a tad confusing with regards to what's canon and what isn't. As I guess they never expected idiots like me to try and piece it all together in the future. As after all, these are only fighting games and I guess endings differ depending on who you play as. Second Impact though does introduce new characters into Street Fighter 3 who were not around previously that do impact Gil's story, including the battle against Akuma who is still travelling the world looking for the world's most powerful opponents. Akuma manages to even kill Gil, but unbeknownst to the wielder of the Dark Hado, Gil was easily able to resurrect himself thanks to his previous DNA engineering. Second Impact is also the game that brings Gil's brother Urien into the mix for the first time ever, a character whom I am sure we will do a standalone video on some day. But to keep it simple, if Gil is to share similarities with the likes of the Christian and Judea God and Jesus Christ, then Urien has more in common with the likes of Judas and Lucifer. As apart from harbouring the bitterness of his brother holding the secret society's presidency as opposed to him, the reigning vice president of the Illuminati style group believes the world needs to be controlled via tyranny and fear rather than Gil's more benevolent approach and beliefs of creating a utopian society for the greater good. During the tournament in Second Impact, the two fight with Urien looking to prove his superiority. Urien manages to pick up a victory, becoming president, only going on to learn that Gil chose to throw the fight, learning that although he was president, Gil still outranked him as was now the emperor in the hierarchy of the secret society, leaving Urien even more bitter and angry. In a third strike that appears to take place after the events of a tournament, Urien continues to plot against Gil, even creating an army of super soldier clones known as the G Project for such a purpose. The endings of the game are all over the place, so we are never quite sure what Urien and Gil's true fate are, with Urien's ending depicting him blowing up a facility where Gil is resting claiming that with Gil gone, he is able to reveal the society's dirty secrets. However, Gil's ending features him converting Alex to the secret society and him leading the entire cast of Street Fighter 3 to paradise via parting the sea, Moses style. With all of this begging the question, is Gil the messiah or just a very naughty boy? Fortunately, we were gained the opportunity to learn more about this character as the years progressed. As while there has yet to be a game released that occurs chronologically after Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 4 and 5 fill in many of the gaps between these games and Street Fighter 2. While Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo ends with Akuma killing M. Bison, the Street Fighter Alpha games revealed that through his convoluted psycho powers and comprehensive cloning programs, he is able to inhibit new bodies following his death setting up perfectly for his grand return to the franchise in Street Fighter 4, where he takes control of the Shadaloo crime organisation once more. In Street Fighter 5, Bison becomes the biggest threat to the planet as of yet, when he uses his Black Moon super weapon to make himself more powerful than ever before, but through the game's story is ultimately defeated by Ryu, this time for good potentially. 
Throughout this story, the Illuminati, aka Secret Society, are actually revealed for the first time. At the start of the game, Guile's old friend Charlie, who had previously died fighting them bison in the series, finds himself alive once again, being tended to by a woman known as Helen, who instructs him to find pieces that control the Black Moons and to destroy bison. It is later revealed that Helen appears to be working for none other than Urian, who possessed the secret technology to bring Charlie back from the dead, and wants bison gone. Urian tests Charlie when they meet and defeats him with ease. After Urian leaves, Helen uses gem technology to heal Charlie and informs him she knows of a more suitable world leader. While this offer never seems to be delivered due to Charlie's demise at the hands of Bison once more, after Ryu defeats the dictator, a scene is shown where it is revealed that the man that Helen was talking about was none other than Gil, and that Helen was actually Colleen from Street Fighter 3, Gil's assistant from the game. It is suggested that while when Bison is positioned as the main antagonist in many Street Fighter games, that Gil intentionally allowed the creation of Shadowloo as part of his grander plan for world domination and has full intention to continue to pull the strings as a sort of puppet master, controlling the organisation against its will. However, much to Gil's disdain, the organisation was able to go rogue, which is why Charlie was revived in part of a plan to defeat Bison for good and fully take back control. The events of Street Fighter V led to M. Bison's defeat, but Gil notes that what exactly went down with Ryu did not match his prophecy, and is thus fascinated with what happened. In Gil's prologue, that can also be experienced as part of Street Fighter V, known as the Emperor Doesn't Look Back, he appears with his secretary, Colleen, once more, this time looking to test a mysterious opponent known as G, who as gamers we still do not know a great deal about yet. Gil is concerned about this man, as apparently his existence is not even mentioned in the prophecy. After a tough battle, Gil still manages to pick up a victory, with G revealing to Gil that we all have one wish, and that is to become one with the Earth, and that G is in fact the president of the world. A playthrough in this mode as Gil ends of a match against Urian, with Gil humiliating his brother in battle, informing him that only he can fulfil the prophecy, bringing Gil's Street Fighter V appearances to a close. Despite Gil's significance as arguably the primary antagonist in the Street Fighter series, or at the very least the last game in the timeline's final boss, his appearances in other video games are restricted to just the terrible fighting game evolution, where rather than featuring as a playable character, he simply makes an appearance in M. Bison's ending, where the game shows Bison and his fellow Shadowloo operatives defeating him, however he is of course able to resurrect himself unscathed. In many ways, I guess although he made limited appearances, Gil is by far one of the most intriguing layered characters in the entirety of the Street Fighter story, who actually raises a lot of questions as to what good and evil is in the first place, with many even arguing the case that Gil is not a villain, despite him being the final boss. So, to finish this video, I think the best way to conclude today's tale is with a quote from the man himself with regards to what the public think of him. In Gil's own words, he states, The ignorant will see it the way that the ignorant wish to see, and the wise will see it the way the wise wish to see. But in the end, when the time comes, everyone will be able to achieve their hopes and dreams, under my guiding hand, with the light of harmony. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the insane story of Gil. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of today's video and whether you look at this man as one of life's heroes or villains. Gil certainly has a stupid amount of depth to him for a character from a franchise that is about beating people up, so I would love to hear your strong opinions down below. If you enjoyed this video, I have plenty more content like this covering the history of various characters from the Street Fighter series for you to check out, so make sure you like this video, subscribe and ring that notification bell to see my future content like this. Further to all of this, this weekend my wife Lady Decade has just uploaded a video to her channel covering the Capcom CP System Changer, the bizarre Capcom home console from 1994 that was created to rival the Neo Geo AES. 
So, if you love fighting games, be sure to watch her video as well. Finally, content like this is partially only possible due to the generous people who support my work on Patreon, which allows me to work on niche videos like this full time without having to solely rely on maximising views for a living. So, I am eternally grateful to everyone who backs me over there to help keep this channel alive. So I would like to finish off by giving huge thank yous to Sebastian Velez, A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heyo, Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Harradine, Corey I. Marcinia, Capcom vs SNK, BXL Gotham, Ron Dinched, Evan Border, Philip Manth, Aswar Rakai, Keith Ferguson, Dropkin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ago, Jordan Duran, Angel Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Kid Anime, Justin Wang, and McNamara, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sanghee, Fellatio, Langston Miller, New, Brian Barry, Sarah Powell, Vlamic Renee, Marvin Aaron Liga, Chris Cool, TOG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Richard Drew Stewart, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroverse.com, Casey Wright, Synth Spaces, Zai, Andrew Bazanski, Alex Summers, Gunther Hendricks, and everybody else who backs me on the Patreon platform. Thank you so bloody much. Yeah. Cheerio.